the question that was, the, the way I heard it anyway, was you use Foxconn as an example of cheap labor. And by the way, Foxconn is going to buy a, a million robots. A million. What's Foxconn? Yeah, uh, Foxconn is uh, a big corporation that has huge factories in China, but also all over the world. And their primary um, customer is Apple. Oh, oh, oh. It's electronics. It's electronics. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they, there has been tremendous accusations of Abusing, uh, abusive labor practices in the Foxconn factories, and, uh, and especially the, the ones that in China where the imperialists want to focus on. But um, I, I don't want to go into Foxconn in China. That's a separate question, the character of China. But they they are going to they are going to find a way to get work done through technology and try to shed workers. And, and they've already purchased uh, a couple of hundred thousand robots, and they're planning to play, they purchase a million of them. They have you know, hundreds of thousands of workers in, in, in their shops. But the, the, the question is, what did capitalism do as an economic system? It took society from Basically, living off the land. I mean, it was a land that agrarian society before capitalism really got into the notion. Slavery and feudalism before. It. Capitalism did two things. It created the working class. <laughs> That's the most important thing. And it developed the productive forces through continuous technological innovation. It did this in the most bloodiest way you can imagine, as Monica talked about the, the, the pillaging of, of Africa, the genocide against the native people, all up in business everywhere, the colonialism, uh, everything it did was based upon plunder. But they did it. They created, they used the science, and the technology in pursuit of profit, they developed the productive force. So they didn't develop it to make our life easier. They developed it to make our life harder, to speed us up and to do everything. But they had to do it for their own rotten, selfish, profit-driven interests. They had to develop technology. But they did, by doing that, they created the possibility for all of us to be liberated from the burden of labor that it, uh, weighs down upon humanity. <laughs> we can be liberated. Now, I remember when I used to type, I used to have to take a, a piece of white little tape if I made a mistake <laughs> and try to figure it out how to, how to fix the, the, the character and move it back in the right space and bang it again. You don't have to do that anymore. You just touch a key. You know, I was a bookkeeper. I used to spend hours trying to figure out the bank reconciliation. I would be there slaving away, oh God, what is this? You know, now, you go like this, you don't have to know anything about anything. You just, they have a car, you put the number. And, and the whole thing is done. Millions of workers have been displaced because of this. And their, their wages have gone down. I mean, I used to work on a trucking platform. There's robots on trucking platforms now. Yeah, they, they unload the trucks robotically. Big ones, and they put them on, on skids. We used to schlep the skids on a high low. Now they take the skids and they just the robot takes it and puts it where it's supposed to be, and then somebody else with another robot comes and picks it up. Did we benefit from that? Did we? Did it, was it was it life made easier for us? No. It was made harder, but it could be so much easier.
it could, it could, you can't, we can't even begin to unravel what life would be like if technology was put to human use. And it, 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 I mean, the work that would go down immediately, leisure time would be more, human development would be better. You wouldn't have kids with no school books. They can't get educated because they got no school books. They can use, you can use computers, iPads, the internet, everything. You could, you could raise up a whole generation just, just by using the present day technology. You could, you could help a whole generation of millions and millions of people, not to mention that the U.S. could pay reparations back to all the oppressed peoples all over the world that it stole all this from. This that, uh, technology could be brought to all over the world and so on. So they have, we, we need to, to liberate us so that we can have the fruits of all the things we've created over the generations. Is we have to get rid of this capitalist place. And like Brenda says, they don't fall down by themselves. They have to be pushed over by a revolutionary movement that's fighting for what it, something that it knows, understands. Get rid of the ruling class. We need socialism. The whole problem with capitalism is that the private appropriation, the private ownership of everything, and the entire world socially can creates everything. This is a contradiction. We all work together, whether we're, we're public workers or factory workers or teachers. We all collectively, socially cooperate to create everything that's done. And everything we do belongs to them. Because they own the means of production. And they automatically take it from us. We never see it. Unless we got some money in our pocket and we can go buy it in a store. We never see what we make. So, in order to get this done with, we have to get rid of private property. That's the only way. Private property. Getting rid of private property. And taking it over for society so that it's used collectively, cooperatively, for human beings. And that's socialism. Well, that's it. And nothing else will do, by the way. <laughs> <laughs>